What up, everybody, and welcome to Baz on Blades. My name is Baz, and I talk about blades, and today we're damn sure going to talk about some blades. Look at what came in the mail today, a Christmas catalog, and I'm not talking about a J.C. Penney's Christmas catalog or a Sears Christmas catalog. I'm talking about a Smoky Mountain Knife Works catalog. This is a big, thick Christmas catalog from the world's largest knife store that I am lucky to uh, live right down the road from. And this is something really special. Let's talk about how special this is first before we even look inside. If you are old enough, you remember how special it was at Christmas every year when you were a kid because you got catalogs in the mail that were full of toys. <clears throat> and uh, that was something that we looked forward to every year. I could entertain myself easily for three months deciding what I wanted for Christmas and then changing my mind and deciding on something different about every other day. Three months worth. The lead up to Christmas with Christmas catalogs was worth Christmas uh, as much as Christmas gifts were themselves. So, this is pretty special to me. And I really need something like this right now because, good Lord, life sucks right now. Baz on Blade stickers. Nobody showed any interest in those. I'm so I'm so butt hurt. I'm totally butt hurt. Uh, let's take a look at this catalog. Before we even get into the catalog, I want to look at something interesting on the back. <clears throat> okay, this is a huge catalog. Smoky Mountain Knife Works, if you've never been there in Sevierville in East Tennessee, is it's unlike any store you've ever been in in your life. I promise you that. You cannot see everything in just one trip. You cannot. So uh, we're going to have to jump through this. We're not going to have time to look at everything, but we'll take a look at it and just enjoy this catalog together. And then, you know, if you want a Christmas shop, all you got to do is call Smoky Mountain Knife Works or go on to their website, smkw.com, um, and request a catalog. It'll be free, guys. And they do printed catalogs. They're the only knife place that I'm even aware of that does a full catalog anymore. It's worth it just to get it, to have it to look at. Put it on the back of the toilet in the bathroom, and hours and hours of entertainment there. So, let's take a look at these Boker, German-made Boker slip joints. Very interesting in that they are in 01 tool steel with an acid wash finish to darken them up to patina that 01. Then they're in wood and they're in copper. All right, that's a very interesting look, and it looks like they're going to be in the $145, $155 range. That's pretty pricey, but, I mean, that's a pretty unique build for a traditional. We've got the Case uh, Christmas Trapper 2022. I'm not a big traditional knife person myself, but we're going to leaf through this catalog. Let's make sure we're good to go here. Got everything centered. You guys can look at it. Uh, let's take a look. We're going to go through some case stuff here. Uh, we got some sort of case Ruby Stardust Kirinite. Okay. Kirinite. That's a Thermal plastic, I believe. I believe. I'm not sure, guys. Don't rate me down in the comment section if I'm wrong. But, you know, Case does their standard patterns in all kinds of different handle materials. Special Christmassy type of stuff. Uh, some of their more modern stuff here. The Maria. Uh, you know, I don't know much about these knives. I don't know who's even making these. Didn't I hear sometimes... No, I can't remember who's making these for cases. Uh, if you know, drop down in the comment section and let me know. Jigged buffalo horn. All right. Uh, smooth old red bone. Uh, then we're going to go into some Havilon here. You're going to see knives in this catalog you've probably never seen in your life. Um, just about every brand reputable brand of knife made around the world is going to be found in this store. And each one of these knives is going to have its own counter section. 
you know, when you go into a store and they've got knives, they got 20 feet a counter, but they got four brands stuffed in there. When you go into Smoky Mountain Knife Works, most of these brands have their own counter sections with the full line of the brands or what is readily available. Um, if you want to go into this store and look at Benchmade knives, you go to the Benchmade counter where it's an entire big counter section set up with only Benchmade, and they've got every Benchmade made, probably. So, uh, Havilon, I don't know much about these. They're the replaceable blade knives. Um, I don't know what steel those are in. AUS 8, I'm seeing here. Um, eh, you know, AUS 8, but they're replaceable blades, like changing out a razor blade. So that's not too awful bad, I guess. So they got all kinds of stuff there. <clears throat> Bear Ops over here. Um, automatics. Bear Ops Automatics made in the United States around the 100 to $150 price point. So that's going to put them right in there with the USA made Kershaw launch series knives uh bear and sons also made in the usa this company is really traditional they remind me a lot of case knives uh, they do a lot of traditional slip joints but they also do a full line of butterfly knives and you can see we've got damascus we've got stainless different handle materials whatnot different price points uh, Bear and Sons continuing here. Uh, Smith and Wesson import stuff. Uh, you would not believe how much these knives sell by the thousands and thousands and thousands. This is the actual price range that real people outside of the knife enthusiast community actually spend on knives. They'll look around this giant knife store for hours and hours and buy a $10 Smith & Wesson knife. I've seen it happen tens of thousands of times in that store. Uh, continuing on with Smith & Wesson, i got to give it to them. They make some neato-looking knives. They're you know, a half a step up from a gas station knife, unless your gas station sells Smith & Wesson knives. <laughs> Uncle Henry... Uh, yeah, I don't really care about Uncle Henry that much. If one of these brands that I say I don't care about is your favorite brand, then, you know, I mean, good for you. I'm not saying anything. I just don't care much about them myself. They don't have the either the quality, the material levels, or the designs that I like personally. Uh, a little more Uncle Henry. We've got some Gerber going on here. I was the senior salesperson on the Gerber counter and did all of the work on the Gerber counter for about a year at Smoky Mountain Knife Works. And you know what? Gerber still gets quite a bit of attention. I'm not a big fan of their product at, outside of a couple of models of their multi-tools. But, you know, there's still a lot of people that remember Gerber from back in the day when they were actually something, you know. Uh, Gerber Automatics over here. We got some Gerber hunting stuff and some multi-tool stuff here. And then we're going to get into Columbia River Knife and Tool. Um, you don't have just one minimalist to choose from. How many minimalists we got? We got all the minimalists. This, we got them all. So, um, you know, your Carson Design M16 folders over here, a classic, a classic. I sold so many of those knives. Oh, my goodness, I sold so many of them. Uh, CRKT continuing, Kershaw Launch Series here. Uh, there's 14 models in the Launch Series. What do we see here? Eight of them right here. Uh, the highest price I see is 128 on that uh, 13 that I just reviewed recently. That's, you know, average price. That's average price. Uh, I paid a little less, but I did have to shop around. <clears throat> so we're continuing on with Kershaw here. Uh, they are a full-service Kershaw uh, dealer. A huge counter section for Kershaw. Uh, zero tolerance. Also, they have a great selection of zero tolerance and pretty much any high-end knife. You're going to see everything in this catalog. Cold steel knives, of course. Uh, cold steel continuing on. I got quite a few cold steels in my collection. Cold steel co uh, continuing on. Mora knives. Uh, Maracnev. Mora knives. When you see the Mora knives in all the survival prep and 
videos. That's what they're talking about. <clears throat> Lion Steel, uh, MKM Knives, which is... Um, Oh, who is that that has started MKM? And I believe Lion Steel is the OEM for these. I cannot remember who it is. A famous maker. I feel so foolish. I can't remember. Uh, Viper Knives, also Italian made. Uh, Real Steel. I've reviewed quite a few Real Steel on this channel here. There's the Megalodon Revival in N690. That's an interesting design. I've reviewed a couple of those. Uh, Castillo Lockbacks, I believe these are Spanish made. No. Uh, they are made in Spain. Okay, so that's cool. Uh, Weatherford, I'm not familiar with Weatherford. They're in 1095. Uh, these look like small shop, semi-custom or custom knives in traditional sort of builds. Uh, Artisan, we're not going to talk about them because I'm done with them. Uh, Beyond EDC. Let's see, Honey Badger. Uh, Concept Knives. All of these knives that I have reviewed, even these sort of second tier Chinese brands, they've got everything in this store. Everything. Kaiser, uh, QSP. Let's see, Civivi. Uh, Mac Cotillery, Cotillery, I don't know about that. Is that Italian? I don't know. Up, oh, Italian. Yes, it is. Uh, Old Bear, which these are, uh, copies of those famous French knives, which will be in the catalog as well. Then we get into some self-defense stuff. These are all pepper sprays and this Pink Cat Impact Tool. And I got to tell you right now, uh, these things sell like crazy. I don't know about the pink one, but the black version does. They're uh, injection molded, fiber reinforced plastic. A couple of uh, finger holes here. It's basically a knuckle. You put it on your keychain. It's plastic. But these points right here, yeah, they put a hurt on somebody. Uh, Daisy and Crossman Air Guns. They sell everything in this store, guys. Oh, we're going to get in some clothing here. We've got Grunt Style. Groove belts over here, both big names in the tactical world. Uh, oh yeah, crew socks, Drake apparel over here. You'll see a lot of hunting apparel, things like that. Columbia, Under Armour, uh, Costa, uh, uh, Maui Gym sunglasses, Rapala brand fillet knives. Uh, we're going to get into SOG. And SOG folders over here, SOG uh, multi-tools over here, uh, tour knives. I've not yet had the privilege of trying any of these tour knives, but they're making a big splash this year. So uh, I need to check them out. Uh, Puma knives, uh, Council Tool Company, which I don't know about. Are these American-made axes? I guess they are. There's an American flag right there, and at reasonable prices from $50 up to $180. Whew, that's a lot of money to pay to have to use that tool. Uh, Sniper Blade Works over here. Uh, Mammoth Coolers, Mammoth Tumblers, Yeti. Uh, Duke Cannon stuff here, uh, cork sickle and more insulated stuff. We've got Night Force um, glass for your rifle. Hey, you want a Night Force uh, scope? Come on down, thirty-six hundred dollars. Woo! Those are super hot scopes though on the uh, precision shooting um, circuit. Super hot, super hot. Uh, Vortex Optics. I like Vortex Optics. Uh, Real Avid here with a bunch of tools for your firearms and whatnot. You got AR tool. You've got Glock tools here. Um, that's a that's a decent selection of firearms oriented multi tools right there. Uh, Leatherman. They are a full service Leatherman dealership. You will not find a bigger selection anywhere else other than Leatherman themselves. 
Then we're going to get into Benchmade. We talked about that earlier. Full service Benchmade dealer. You're going to find every model that they have there. Spider Co. They just built the new Spider Co. counter over there that um, they're very proud of. It's a nice dedicated space for Spider Co. Big old long counter. Um, if you saw the photo I posted on Instagram when I was at Smoky Mountain waiting on that exclusive of the PM2, you saw where the counter space went in, but that was, that was before they built it. We've got uh, Becker stuff, the Ontario OKC stuff, uh, Essie. You know, guys, I love Essie. Full, everything Essie makes there. Uh, Outlier. And that's a $460 piece right there, so that's not cheap stuff. Uh, Smith & Sons, again, American-made there. Got us a centerfold. <laughs> yeah, buddy, a knife centerfold. Going back into case, and we'll probably go through a big case section here. Uh, okay. I was checking the time, guys. So we got all these case. We got 6.5 bone stack. We got case kitchen knives. When's the last time you saw case kitchen knives? You should see the case counter at this store. It's a big island in the middle of the newer section of the store. Um, it's, it's just a huge selection, guys. A huge selection. Uh, we got all of this stuff, case stuff here, case fixed blades, case astronaut knife. Um, I guess case fixed blades have gone about everywhere damn where there is to go. Uh, case collector stuff, you'll also find your, your sheaths and everything, branded case, care items, uh, case hats and everything. Uh, case is a big deal at Smoky Mountain Knife Works. And Smoky Mountain Knife Works is a big deal for Case. They are a huge dealer. Then we're going to get into Boker here. We already looked at a little bit of Boker. Uh, Giant Mouse. Two pages here for Giant Mouse, guys. I love this design. It's just too short in the handle. Just too short for me, but I freaking love that design. Uh, buck Knives. I'm not a huge Buck Knife fan. Uh, let's see, still going on buck, still going on buck here, condor, knife and tool, uh, tops knives, just bought one of these, the, uh, um, Lacey Zabo Express, I got the double edge, and it's, <laughs> it's so cool, it is so cool, I love tops knives, I've got, I think, three or four in my collection, I've got a, a Pray There War Boo, and I've got that Express, and then I've got a Lioness, and something, I believe. Something else. Remington stuff, Remington tins, and board art here. Uh, there's a lot of that stuff all over this store. Just every type of memorabilia and nostalgia-based bullshit that you could think of. This is a store, once you get your wife inside, she is going to find just as much to look at as you. Uh, carry your cell phone split up. That way, neither one of you have to hear the other one whine. So, we're going to go in here, and we got some Swiss Army knives. We've got Victorinox right here. Uh, let's see, Medford. Medford getting two pages in the Christmas catalog. Congratulations to Greg and company on that. You know, I'm not a huge fan of Medford knives, but they are well made, and you gotta love Greg Medford. Uh, Microtech here. Microtech got everything that they have, basically, including special editions, uh, I brand, and Queen pocket knives. For those of you that know the traditional pocket knife world, uh, there are others besides Case and Boker. Uh, then we're going to get into sharpeners here. You've got a full array of the work sharp stuff. You got Smith stuff, which I don't use. I do not condone hardly any of this stuff. Uh, anything that's got carbide bits in it, if you put that on your knife, it is only because you hate knives. Never, ever sharpen your knife with a carbide sharpener. Good God. 
there is hardly anything more destructive to a knife blade than that. Um, now that I've preached, we got uh, just all kinds of sharpeners. They've got a whole section downstairs at Smoky Mountain Knife Works where they've got um, the knife makers supplies. They've got a whole section that's got nothing but sharpeners everywhere you turn. Um, knife cases and all of that. Okay, we're going to get into Rough Rider, which Rough Rider is sold at various stores, but they're basically Smoky Mountain Knife Works house brand. And it started out, they were doing traditional slip joints in 440 stainless steel, you know. And now they've really, they've expanded everything with a bunch of different cover materials, of course. And they've got different bolster brand and they've got different, um, all the different patterns and all kinds of different blade steels. So, uh, this, the denim micarta, is in T10 carbon steel for your blade, so that's going to patina up nicely, going to resharpen nicely, not going to hold that good of an edge. Um, carbon steel on this classic carbon, uh, I don't know here, this is under classic carbon, so I'm imagining that's carbon steel as well. 440A right here, which is going to put you in line with the stainless used by the big brand. Okay, the the stainless that Case uses is a 440 stainless. Uh, we've got Highland knives here in Rough Rider. Um, let's see, Copper Swirl. That's with a Copper Swirl uh, cover on it, 440A. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, more here, Rough Rider, uh, more 440A, there's some premium Rough Riders, I hope they're featured in here. These knives are great, they're well made for the cost, um, they look good. You can give them to, this is a great one for, you know, a kid to get their granddad or something like that. Uh, it gives them something that actually means something. It's a decent quality. It looks nice. It's familiar patterns that people are familiar with. And they're pretty well made. Um, they didn't have the... Uh, unless I missed the premium series there. They didn't have it uh, set up. Marbles, which I believe Marbles, the brand... Marbles, the company, the original company, has gone under... I believe that Smoky Mountain Knife Works picked up that brand name. I, I think. I may be wrong about that. If I am, you know, my apologies. But continuing on with marbles, uh, then we're going to get into Right Edge. Now, Right Edge is what? Are they... That very much has the look of Pakistani-made stuff. It is... The look is sort of Pakistani, damascus -y type of stuff, although they are using a mix of synthetic handle materials, which you don't usually see on the, you know, Paki mascus stuff. You see more woods and brass and things like that, bone, things like that. Um, and you know what? This stuff sells really well. You and I, I wouldn't be caught dead carrying one of these knives, uh, but... This type of thing sells really well to somebody that wants something that looks cool at a decent price. Uh, more right edge here. And you get into sort of fantasy type of stuff here. And some helmets, miniature helmet replicas. Into the knife makers stuff. Uh, some Damascus blades, stainless blades. Um... I wish this blade right here had a thinner rat tail tang on it because my neighbor Gary wants me to do a show piece for when he does his period shooting stuff and reenacting. It's not to be used, so I'm not worried about the crappy Damascus. He wanted about a four and a half inch blade. But the piece of stag he wants me to use, it's crown stag. I'm already going to have to throw it to lengthen it out. And it's not a very big piece. So I don't know. Uh, that still is probably not that hard. I may be able to cut it, just grind it off thin. I don't have to worry about blowing the uh, heat treat out of it. Uh, hen and rooster, hen and rooster. Uh, we're going to get into some frost cutlery here. 
you get your 50 knife mega set with a bonus liner lock. Look at that. 50 pieces of this super high quality frost stuff and a free, probably $10 liner lock. That's crazy, guys. People buy this stuff and they, you know, like people who buy it that own businesses, they don't know what to buy their, their employees, but they want to get them something that says, hey, I appreciate you being here. Uh, they'll sell these, they'll sell these sets out every year. They'll sell them out, guys. A lot of those cheap knives being given out by people with good intentions. You just take them with a smile on your face and you say thank you and just go on. <laughs> Whitetail cutlery. This is more, you know, cheaper stuff here, guys. Because there is there is some of this stuff in Smoky Mountain Knife Works. They've got entire sections that are oriented towards this stuff. Uh, not only do they have all the high-end all the high-end stuff, guys. Um, they still, they put enough low-end in there to where the bulk of the customers that are coming through because it's a tourist attraction, the real world doesn't care about knives like we do. That's, that's the thing that knife enthusiasts don't understand because we talk to other knife enthusiasts on the internet. If we hang out with anybody, they're probably into knives as well. We don't realize that the rest of the world could care less about knives. They don't care at all. Zero. Most of the world, um, and let, me, let me say most people in the United States will never spend more than $20 on a knife. It doesn't matter what kind of knife it is. They will not. Uh, my mom has a drawer full of knives. I guarantee she didn't pay more than two or three dollars for any of them, and she destroys them too. Uh, so we got you know Christmas truck knife sets here from Frost. Uh, they do a lot of that every year. A lot of grandkids and grandfathers get that stuff. Um, they're wearing the stocking stuffers. Anything from. Um, you know, full-size fixed blade knives to pins uh, to monkey fists to tactical stockings. Uh, just everything in there. Let's continue on here. Your beer belt. Come on, guys. Um, Smoky Mountain Knife Work t-shirts. All kinds of tin signs. They've got just walls full of tin signs covering everything. Outdoors firearms, sports, uh, classic product from old, you know, cigarette ads and soda ads, beer ads, all of this nostalgia stuff. It's just thousands and thousands and thousands of items of that stuff in the store. And, and here we go. I mean, you can see here, we got cars, we got Americana, we've got John Wayne, we've got video game humor, um, Wild West, we've got everything available. Wonder Woman, come on, guys. Uh, then we're going to get into accessories, sheaths, knife rolls. If you've got a knife that doesn't have a sheath, chances are there's going to be a general type of sheath that will fit it. Say you got a fixed blade and you need a, just a basic leather sheath for it. Here you go. From $2.99 to $4.99 covers you from 5-inch blade to 8-inch blade. Well, that's pretty decent, guys. You got nylon sheets. You got knife rolls over here. Um, they Smoky Mountain Knife Works is an all-inclusive resort for knife enthusiasts. They don't just have the knives. They've got everything that surrounds the knives care products, sharpening systems, storage um, options, just everything. So we're going to get into some Swiss kitchen here. Um, Victorinox. Um, I've got quite a bit of Victorinox kitchenware. Mine's not in the um, commercial type series. It's in the forged series. Uh, a very nice stuff. Um, downstairs at Smoky Mountain Knife Works, there is a huge kitchen area. It is as big as a lot of stores are by themselves. They sell anything that you want in modern, commercially available 
um, cutlery, cookware cutlery is available in this store. If you want to spend $5,000 on a set of knives, you can do it here. If you want to buy a cheap set of knives, you can do it there. Everything in between. Uh, Zwilling uh, stuff. All right, let's see what we got here. We've got Wustoff. They'll have their entire product line. Uh, you've got Shun here from Kai Cutlery. They're going to have their entire product line, basically. Um, let's see, Rada Cutlery. Uh, old Hickory, for you old timers out there that remember carbon steel with wood handles. Uh, order form there. Let's get over here. A few things here. Smoky Mountain exclusives here on these uh, Rough Riders for Christmas. We got some Boker. We got some Baron Sons here. And again, we're on the back page. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Like I say, uh, contact them right here, 800-251-9306, or even easier, go to smkw.com and just sign up for a free catalog. They'll get it right out to you. They do not know I am doing this. I just did it for the fun of it, but I tell you what, if you've stuck around this long in the video, when you go, if there's any place to put down that Baz on Blade sent you, please do it. I would appreciate that. As always, thank you very much for taking the time to watch one of my videos. God bless all of you, and we will talk to you again.